Yo Wagwan, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a home studio for cheap, a high quality home studio for cheap as well. Not a mediocre home studio that's gonna have you making trash songs. This will actually have you making great high quality songs and you don't have to break your bank to do it. This is gonna be, uh, well, I'm gonna give you an option for under 500 pounds. So definitely stay tuned to the end. And I'll also be giving you an even higher quality option, which is still under a thousand pounds. So yeah, let's do this. If you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Carter A from jcarteray.com, teaching you how to be better at music, online business, and online marketing. Now, this is the number one spot for musicians and creatives that don't want to be starving artists so if that sounds like you click that subscribe button check out the rest of the content on the channel you're going to love it here now before we get into it i've got a question of the day for you and my question of the day is what equipment do you currently have in your studio let me know everything that you currently have in your studio what mic are you using what audio interface are you using what stand are you using what headphones are you using let me know and i think that would be super super interesting and helpful to anyone else who's watching this video so let's get into it now First of all, I'm just gonna be going through my uh, page on my site that basically shows you the tools I use to make and produce music because I'm gonna be showing you what I use basically and what you can use in order to create a studio that's very, very high quality that will get you some great, great songs. Now, I have to give you a disclaimer really, really quickly just in case you came to this video hoping that I was gonna show you what laptop or what computer to buy. That's not what I'm gonna show you here. This is assuming that you've got a laptop or a computer already. If you want a video going in depth on the computers or laptops or whatever that I recommend to use in order to build a studio, let me know in the comment section. But I do have to tell you that when I first started making music and I started, you know, producing my own music and doing all that sort of stuff and recording myself, I did not have a high powered laptop. You do not need a super high powered laptop to do any of this. You can have a really mediocre laptop and get this stuff done. So you can pretty much use whatever you're using now, as long as it has some memory. If you've bought a laptop that's got like five gigs of memory, then, you know, that's gonna be tough times. But if you've got a decent amount of memory in there, then you should be able to use that laptop and you should be able to you like buy an external hard drive anyways. When I first, like the first laptop that I ever started making music on, I believe I paid, I think it was either 200 or 400. I think it might've been 200, I'm not 100% sure but I bought it from my plug and you know, I, I assume that laptop fell off the back of Valorius or some sort of some sort of thing there. So, you know, that's, you know, disclaimer there. But, you know, if I was to go and purchase that laptop today, I believe it was a Dell Inspiron or something. If I was gonna go and purchase that laptop today, it will be way cheaper. It'll probably be like a hundred pound or whatever. So you can use a pretty cheap laptop and get good results. now. Let's let's get into it. First of all, I'm gonna go through the equipment that you know I'm using and the equipment that I suggest you use. Then I'm gonna give you two different lists of the equipment that you can purchase. The first list will be the cheap version. Um, the second list will be you know the higher quality, a little bit more expensive version. So you can pick and choose which one you actually want to go with. And yeah, let's let's get into it. So first of all. I recommend the Rode NT1A. That is what I'm using right here. And it's what I use for all my content. I use it for making videos, as you can see. I use it for recording vocals in my songs and whatnot. And I believe I've had this for like, maybe three, three, maybe four years. I don't know. Before I had the Rode NT1A, I was using a USB mic that I believe I got in a, um, in a, a package deal that was like um, vocal essentials or pro tool essentials or something like that and it, it had uh, a usb mic it came with a little stand and it also came with a very very limited version of pro tools and that was okay but the rode nt1a is just you know 
you should get this yeah if you want to make you want to make you want your songs to sound good this is the standard in it this isn't like the most expensive mic but it is a good mic and um on amazon it is 124 pounds if you go to i will leave a link to this page in the description so you can just purchase whatever you want you can click on and it will take you to the amazon page and all that sort of stuff um but i highly recommend this mic i've been using it for years and it gets the job done you don't need to purchase you know a super expensive mic that's like 700 pounds or whatever it's not necessary the reason why it's not necessary is because that money is honestly better spent on software on plugins on you know different vsts and whatnot because the mic can only do so much like this mic takes in the the audio information and it takes in very very well and then from there you need to know how to mix and master your vocals and once you learn how to do that you can make this mic sound beautiful and you can make a cheap usb mic sound beautiful like it's all about the software and the processing that's really really the most important part in my personal opinion so i wouldn't suggest buying a 700 pound mic or something like that i've seen people go out and do that and i just think wow that's a waste of money especially if you're just starting out and this is like the first home studio that you're building there's no need for that you can upgrade to that down the line if you really want to do that now, this is not a USB mic. This is a, uh, I believe it's called an XLR mic. Is it XLR? I'm not 100% sure. It's a, it's definitely a condenser mic. I believe it has XLR inputs. I believe that's what it's called. And in order to get that hooked up to the computer that you're using, you need an audio interface. The audio interface I recommend is the PreSonus AudioBox USB. This is the audio interface I am currently using. This is the audio interface I have been using ever since I got this mic. Honestly, I when I was purchasing this, I was broke, innit? I didn't, I didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't have a lot of options. There was a slightly more expensive audio interface called, I think, the Scarlett Focusrite. I didn't get that. I don't know if I don't know if that's any better. I don't know what difference you get from audio interface, but the PreSonus works perfectly fine. So I'd suggest that. I believe it's uh, 72 pounds on Amazon right about now. The Scarlet Right is probably like 100 pounds or something, um, but I suggest this because it works and it still gets the job done to this day. I've got no real complaints about it. Maybe I'll upgrade eventually and let you know what I think of another audio box, but I can't really recommend things that I don't use. So I'm not gonna be doing that right here. Next, you definitely need a mic stand. There's no qualms about this. You need a mic stand, especially if you're building a studio where you want other people to come and record and you wanna make some money off that, you need a stand. And the stand that I suggest is the Tiger Boom mic stand, pretty much because it's cheap. It's $19.99 on um, Amazon and yeah it gets the job done it's nothing special that's what i used to use right about now i'm using my rode desk mic stand which is the next thing on the list and yes i do recommend the rode desk mic stand but this is not something that you need to purchase straight away you can think about purchasing this if you've got more money and you're willing to spend more money on it then yeah get both to be honest because then you have the option of having the stand-up mic stand for when other people come to record and then you have your desk mic stand that you can use for example for filming videos like this or for recording your song sitting down and, and all that sort of stuff the desk mic stand is 62 pounds 20 on amazon so that's the price of that and i i like it i like it it, it does its job like as i've been using it for like i think a year um i would like the angle i would like to be able to change the angle and stuff but honestly um you know it it does its job like there's no no real complaints about it next we've got headphones you do need headphones when you're recording so that you can hear the beat you can hear maybe your vocals and that is not going into the mic if you didn't have headphones you wouldn't be able to hear anything or you'd have to play it out which would all get picked up by the mic and then you just create terrible recordings so these behringer hps 3000 headphones are the headphones that i used to use i've actually still got a pair over here on my desk these look do they look mash up oh they look all right <laughs> they're over here um i used to use that 
and then i decided to upgrade i believe it was because yeah one of the airs stopped working when it got in a certain position which you know happens when your headphones are starting to die and these basically broke down every year like i bought a new pair of these headphones every single year these cost 10 pound 80 so it's not a big expenditure on a yearly basis but i decided i needed to up my game and get some better headphones that was gonna last the long haul so i upgraded to these headphones that you're seeing right now which are not these headphones that you see on the screen these are the headphones that i use when i'm going out and whatnot these are my personal headphones i do not use these to make music these are the headphones that i'm currently using the audio technica ATH m 50x studio monitor professional headphones and these are the headphones that i use for mixing recording engineering everything i use these headphones um like if i'm mixing I'll listen on my speakers and then I'll listen in the headphones and these headphones are really really good monitor headphones because they just give you a nice baseline basically baseline in terms of it's the bass across the board of what the song sounds like it doesn't have any bass boosting abilities or anything like that so you, you're not going to be hearing the bass louder than it's going to be if someone's playing it on a different pair of headphones or, or whatnot so like if you bought something like dre beats and you thought you could mix on those those are going to boost your beat your bass a lot so when you mix on those you're going to hear that bass and you'll be like oh this bass is thumping and then you're gonna, you know, export it and whatnot, listen on another pair of headphones and be like, where's that bass? So you definitely do not want headphones that are boosting the bass or anything like that. So you don't want just consumer headphones when you are mixing your music. So you definitely want some monitor headphones like this. Um, I did see an ad the other day for a masterclass, a singing masterclass with uh, the beautiful Christina Aguilera. And she was wearing some Audio Technica headphones. I'm not sure if it was the exact same pair because I'm sure Audio Technica make other headphones that look like this, that have the symbol there, but it looked like the same pair that I've got. So, you know, if, if it's good for Christina Aguilera, it's, it's good for you, it's good for me. I like these headphones, they're working perfectly fine. I, be, I don't know exactly how long I've had them, but I feel like it's been at least a year and they haven't broken down. So, you know, I can't complain. These are pretty good headphones. I think they come with two different types of, um, what's it called? Two different, you know, two different types of wires that come from the headphones and I, I don't know where i'll put my other one uh, but they, they've got this this wrinkly one or curled spiral type and i swear they've got like a straight one as well so you know that's great if you need options and then i believe it also comes with one of these adapters which you definitely need i've got like i've got a bunch of them now i've got like three maybe even four of these no, I've definitely got four, yeah, because I've got three that I can see and I believe one is plugged in. I believe you get these adapters when you purchase a headphone, so you don't have to purchase them separately, but you will need the adapter to plug it into your audio uh, interface as far as I know. Then for my speakers, these are the speakers that I'm currently using, the Behringer monitor speakers. Unfortunately, it seems like they don't sell these anywhere anymore these were ms40s uh i don't i don't see these these aren't on amazon anymore and i haven't found anywhere else online that's selling them so in instead of getting these i would suggest getting um the pre-sonus monitor speakers so if we just type in pre-sonus and the only reason why i would suggest the pre-sonus speakers is because you know pre-sonus are the same guys that made the audio box that i'm using that i've been using for years so i trust their brand and this has a bunch of good reviews it seems 168 reviews is on 4.5 and it's 82 pounds so it seems like good stuff oh yeah i didn't tell you the price of the audio technica headphones those are 107 pounds so they are quite pricey um but yeah the pre-sonus uh monitor speakers you can grab these over there on amazon they also do have this as well they've got like a a whole 
package where you can get audio interface, microphone, monitors, headphones, and Studio One software. So you can look into that if you want to. I believe if you do buy the PreSonus audio box, you do get Studio One software with it. So if you do not have any DAW already, then you'll be able to use Studio One to record your vocals. But I do believe that that is quite limited and there are certain things you can't do like import mp3s or something silly like that that they want you to go and pay some next thing to to do which is disgusting but i, I get it they want to make money in it um, let's continue going down then we've got a midi keyboard this is the main uh large midi keyboard that i've got right now but Again, this is no longer listed on Amazon. I bought this many, many, many years ago. So that's now gone, but they do still have my uh, mini 32 keyboard that I do have over here, which I'll use if I'm, if I'm producing in my bed, I'll bring this over and use that uh, if I'm producing on my laptop and whatnot. And that is currently, 42 pounds on Amazon and I, I really do like this, but you could probably find other keyboards that you might like even better. So this is really, you know, get this keyboard if you, if you wanna get it. If this is like a good cheap alternative to other keyboards, but if you really wanna purchase a really, really high end keyboard, then I personally would go for, um, a keyboard from Native Instruments, but I'm, I'm I haven't used any of their keyboards, so I can't really recommend them. I can't really say if they're good, but as far as I know, they've got a keyboard that basically you can pick a scale and it will highlight all the keys that are in that scale. And I think that's just amazing for anyone who's you know new to production or new to making music and not really that versed in music theory. So I I would. Like I'm planning to get one of those eventually, but yeah, I still use this. It's 42 pounds. It's cheap. If you need a MIDI keyboard because you're producing and whatnot, then definitely grab this. Then we've got, you know, my book, how to make a song at home. This is great. If you're using Logic Pro X, I guess you can use it for other DAWs, but I'm assuming that this book is outdated now. Cause I think I've wrote it like, 2011 i will be making like courses on how to make your own beats and whatnot and i'll probably do another course on how to make a song at home using fl studio so honestly i'd suggest waiting for those courses instead of buying this book but if you're really really desperate and you really want to know you know the elements to making a song at home you can definitely go get this you can get it for free on kindle you can read it for free on kindle or i think you can pay like 12 pounds to get the um paperback version i should have brought a, a copy of it in here to like show it to you but yeah that's that was like the first book that I ever wrote then we have music production software and vsts and basically i'm only going to be showing you the software and we're not going to get into like getting vsts and whatnot because then you know things can get super expensive really i use fl studio for my music production needs and i use it to record vocals as well honestly if all you're going to do if you're not going to make any beats or anything, uh, you don't need this. You don't need FL Studio. You can get Audacity, which is completely free. You could potentially get Reaper, which is something that I've used, you know, back in the day. I, I think they still put that out. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure because I don't use it. But you can, you can find free DAWs to record just vocals to like bring in a beat and record your vocals over. So you can definitely look into that, but I would suggest getting FL Studio. And if you get FL Studio, I personally would suggest that you get the signature edition. The reason I'd suggest that, it is a little bit more expensive than the producer edition, but the reason I suggest you get the signature edition is because in the signature edition, you get things like new tone and you get, um, picture as well i thought picture was in the producer edition but it's not it's only in the signature edition so that's basically like a, a auto tune type thing so if you want you know pitch correction and that sort of stuff that'll really really help you out and i believe you get gross beat in the signature edition i'm unsure if that's in the producer edition as well but you can go to the fl studio um main website to check out the editions and see what the difference is between them but when you're going to purchase it Go to either go to my website and click on you know the button 
or go to Amazon and you'll get it for cheaper uh, because the signature edition on Amazon is 220 pounds, like 220 pounds. The producer edition, which is the, the level under is 146 pounds 99. And on the FL Studio website, I believe the signature edition is like 260 pounds and the producer edition I don't think I looked at that, but 260 pounds is 40 pounds more than they're selling it on Amazon for. So definitely go to Amazon instead. So once you've got all of that, you basically got everything you need to have a home studio. You don't need to purchase a, a different pop shield or anything like that because the Rode NT1A does come with this pop shield i did you know purchase a pop shield and stuff when i first got my stand and all that sort of stuff but it's not necessary this comes with a shock mount and pop shield so you have everything you need you don't need to get you know another pop shield and you know get one of those big ones or anything like that that's not necessary you can get that if you want but i would suggest you wait till you're ready to upgrade and i would say you should upgrade after you've made money from your music that's what it's all about you get the basics on a budget you know you get everything that you need to make high quality great music and then you use the money that you make from music in order to upgrade stuff you don't just get a bunch of stuff for the sake of getting it because then you just spend a bunch of money that you don't need to spend now as i said there were two different packages that i wanted to share with you now the first package is with the rode nt1a yeah you got the audio box you got the stand you got uh, these budget Behringer headphones, which is like 10 pounds. Then you've got the uh, pre-sonus speakers that I showed you. And you've got FL Studio Producer Edition. But remember, if you're, if you're not making any beats or anything like that, and you just want the bare minimum to just be able to record your vocals, then get Audacity, that's completely free. Uh, but with the Producer Edition, that is £455.78, so that's under £500, and you've got a fully operational home studio where the sky's the limit. You can make beats, you can make songs, you can, you can make a musical career out of that you really don't need to spend more money than that to be honest and then if you want to go a little bit further you can get the mic the audio box you get the stand you get the desk stand as well you can get these proper headphones yeah the audio technica's headphones you get the monitor speakers uh you get the um the mini 32 midi keyboard and you get fl studio signature edition that'll come up to 729 pounds 19 so that's the expensive version and then if you was to get the budget version i'm uh, sorry i forgot to tell you the, tell you this if you was to get the budget version and the midi keyboard then that would be 497 pounds 78 so again the super budget version without the midi keyboard would be 455 pounds 78 with the keyboard, it'll be £497.78, so still under £500, great times. Yeah, if you've got a £500 budget, you've got a home studio, you can get cracking and start releasing songs. And then if you want to create that super high quality studio, but still want to spend under £1,000, you, you'll be spending around 700 well, no, exactly, £729.19. And that is how you can set up a home studio on a budget for cheap like that that's it under a thousand pounds and you're up and running if you was to convert this from you know to from gbp to us dealers quickly check that because honestly i don't know because i use i use pounds over here let's see um let's just do 500 500 pounds to us dollars 655 and then if we do uh 729 US dollars that's that's nearly a thousand wow <laughs> exchange rates moving a bit wild <laughs> but um still under a thousand still under a thousand uh in pounds under 500 pounds uh if you're on the budget and yeah that's basically where we're at i hope this video has helped you out and before you go i do have a gift for you for making it to the end of this video you can now get five of my best beats 
absolutely free. These beats are perfect for singing, rappers, and whatnot. If you want some R&B trap type beats, this is where it's at. Link will be in the description or go to jcarteray.com forward slash free beats. Grab those beats now. I don't know how much longer they're going to be available. I don't know if I'm going to have them up for very much longer. So definitely take advantage of this before it goes away if you watched one of my videos three months ago you would have seen that i was offering 10 beats which i'm no longer doing so make sure you jump on this before it goes away because i may change things up at any point in time with no warning so definitely go and grab those free beats asap and yeah if you've got any questions or any other videos you'd like me to make, please leave those in the comment section down below. And I'll see you in the next video where you'll learn more about music, online marketing and online business. Peace out.